Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan and welcome to another edition of the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. We are in the uh, middle of a discussion about dual deployment altimeters and I have with me Jeff Lane who does some work for me here at Apogee Components. He uh, does some product testing and uh, in the previous videos we've showed you how to set up uh, dual deployment altimeter in your rocket and how it all works. In this video we want to talk about uh, setting up the altimeter with some of the software that comes with it and um, this particular so, uh, altimeter has data logging capability. Uh, Jeff, what does data logging mean? It means that you get a, uh, a chart, basically, when you've completed a flight that shows uh, altitude versus time. And it also, with, with the uh, Anticor, it also shows the uh, blocks of time that occurred when, when the uh, ejection charges were fired. Uh, do, you, do you have to have data logging capability? No, you don't. Uh, you can fly the Intercore without ever hooking it up to a computer. Um, you can, you can. It's it comes with default settings that include uh, the Drogue uh, deployment at Apogee and uh, main deployment at 150 meters, and so you, you never have to hook it up to a to a uh, a computer. And uh, with the Intercore, you get. Um, uh, when, when it starts up, you get beeps that indicate wh uh, whether there's enough battery power um, and whether your circuits for uh, the main and the drogue uh, deployment are set up correctly. And then when, you finished with the, when you're finished with the flight, you get a, uh, uh, a beep indication of the, the altitude that you've achieved. Okay, so data logging is, is more of a, of a gee whiz type of feature or? Well, it's, it's uh, important if you're doing, you know, scientific work, um, so test, s testing. Schools might want to use this kind of feature? Yeah, schools, it, it's great for schools because it shows acceleration and uh, altitude and, and uh, it's, a, it, it's, an, it's a really interesting uh, tool. Plus, um, you can change the settings using the software of, of the altimeter. So okay, so the software is dual purpose. One is to set up the altimeter and then one is to like review your data. Correct, yeah. Okay, so uh, walk us through uh, the software that comes with this. Now, now this, the software, there's, there's two, as I understand this, there's two kinds of software. There's the firmware software, which drives the altimeter itself, and then there's the software that shows you the pretty graphs. Right. The um, there's there's firm firmware, um, which is uh, it's a bootloader uh, software that you can you, you can download both of these from the Intercore website, and um, the the firmware updates your your uh, altimeter to work with with newer software that you that you hook up to uh, on the PC. Uh, I haven't. Uh, tried uh, reloading the firmware yet. Um, so basically, you don't really need to do the touch the firmware at all. Right. I, um, you know, I like like I say, I haven't done it myself. So, um, and I don't know how hard it would be or or what kind of technical challenges you'd have to deal with. But the uh, the software is is real real simple, real easy to use, and very straightforward. Okay. It, it looks like right at this point you've got a, a USB cable, and, and the USB cable does not come with the altimeter. Now this USB cable is I got from a, a camera or a video camera, uh, and you could just plug it right in. It's got a receptacle built right into it. So um, it doesn't look like you have the battery installed, Jeff. Why is that? Right. When you're reading data or changing settings uh, using the software, you, you don't have to have a battery hooked up. Okay. That's cool. It's powered by the USB port itself. Okay. Uh, show, us, show us the software and what are we, what are we looking at here? The uh, the software is is installed on the PC here, and um, you just open it. It's very simple. Um, this is is the uh, the way you the, the little panel that you use to change settings. And for instance, right now the default settings for line A um, are to fire at Apogee, and line B are to fire at a specific altitude of 150 meters. And then you have an inhibit setting here, which is, is two seconds, and, and that's a, a, a mock uh, timer to uh, um, allow two seconds to pass um, while uh, a rocket might be passing through mock and, and the uh, um, pressure settings uh, don't uh, 
they don't they don't read uh, they don't start reading until after two seconds. So so basically, what happens when when the rocket goes through the speed of sound, you get this pressure wave pushing on the rocket, which looks like an increase in pressure. And right. if, if you recall from our previous videos, when the pressure increases, that tells the altimeter that the rocket is heading down. But in this case, the rocket is still heading up. It's just going through supersonic speed. Um, and you get this pressure compression, but then as soon as it drops below supersonic speed, the pressure starts decreasing again because it's, the rocket is still going up. And so this Mach inhibit is the setting that tells the altimeter to don't fire the ejection charges. It, it says wait, wait to fire the inject, ejection charges until after this specific time. Okay. One thing about the uh, al altimeters uh, that, that's very important with the uh, the Intercore altimeter. The, uh, uh, the all of the settings are done in in software. A lot of altimeters um, have these settings set up um, on hardware and little little dip switches that you have on the surface of, of the circuit board. And that works fine, right? And that works fine. What what you gain with the uh, Intercore is, for instance, I can change the. Uh, the altitude for the the main parachute de, um, deployment from 150 uh, meters to 151 meters. So um, I, I can have fairly precise control digitally over um, the altitude for, especially for the main deployment, um, if I want to have precise control over that. Okay. The other thing about this particular altimeter that's very cool is you can use it to do staging. And the way you do that is you go up to, to line A here and you would change the, uh, the line A firing to time. You'd click on time. And then um, the, uh, instead of deploying a drogue parachute, you would actually be firing a, an igniter at a specific time to fire your, uh, your upper stage for your rocket. So it would act as a timer then, but then at that point you don't have dual deployment capability anymore. Correct. At that point you would you would set your your line B then up to fire at apogee and uh, then you would have you wouldn't have the the capability that you have designed into dual deployment to bring the, the rocket down close to the pad. Is there a, a way around that, like say using the motor's ejection charge to fire the the, the drogue chute and then this to fire the main chute? Y you, can, you can disable the uh, line A altogether if you want and have, have line B set up um, to fire uh, at uh, a specific altitude for the main parachute and instead of using the electronics to fire the drogue you can use the motor to uh, uh, deploy your drogue parachute. So you could theoretically do dual deployment in a two-stage rocket this way? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. But you're, you're using, you have to use the ejection charge built into the motor. Right. As,